Tisha. Hi, Donnie. And welcome, everyone, to Ursa Short Fiction, the podcast where we geek out on our favorite short stories. I'm Donnie Walton, author of The Final Revival of Opal and Nev. And I'm Disha Thulia, author of The Secret Lives of Church Ladies. As always, this show is produced with support from you. Become an Ursa member today by going to ursastory.com slash join. You'll get exclusive bonus episodes and you'll help fund future stories and conversations. Today, we're excited to share a story from Jonathan Escoffrey, author of the award-winning 2022 collection, If I Survive You. The story is called Under the Aki Tree, and it's performed by Torian Brackett. Let's tee this story up a little bit, Donnie. What can you tell us about this one without giving too much away? Yeah, so this story, I felt like, is so integral to the collection because the things that happen in it have repercussions through the rest of the collection. It's the second story in in the book, and the book as a whole is about a Jamaican-American family in Miami. It's mostly focused on the younger son, Trelawney, uh, but it also, you know, has stories about Delano, the older son, and then there is Topper, their father, um, who is, you know, as Disha, you said in our interview with Jonathan, a bit of an asshole. <laughs> but here in this story, we get it from the point of view of Topper, sort of an explanation in a sense of why he is this way, how the relationship with his son Trelawney has devolved to this point. It's told in Topper's patois, so it's a very beautiful, beautiful voice. And he's telling Mm -hmm. his story of how he comes to the States and sort of over the years ruins his marriage with the boy's mother and his relationship with Trelawney. And I just, I found it so, so, so powerful, especially those ending images. You know, I think this story is so essential to this collection because it doesn't make Topper necessarily sympathetic. I don't think that's the right word, but yes, he's an asshole, but because of this story, maybe he's a little less of an asshole. Yes. Um, and, and there's also a moment here where he's he, he does express some sensitivity where he's talking about innocent people being killed. It's just one line, you know, but sometimes there can be just one line in a story that makes the story, that makes the character. And because of that moment of kind of understanding and sensitivity on his part, I felt like, you know, it humanized him uh, to I mean, not that he's he's a monster otherwise. I feel like I'm kind of overstating mm-hmm. this, but I do think that this story is a, an important building block in the larger collection because it gives us this view of Topper from the inside. You know, he's yes. telling us who he is and he remains in many ways unknown to his sons and even to his ex-wife. You know, that yeah. as the reader, we see these facets of him that other people don't get to see and we get to hear it in his own voice and it's just truly a compelling story. Well, it gives him, like you said, it gives him some extra dimensions and it gives him a little bit of tenderness as well because Mm -hmm. we see from his point of view kind of the difficulties and the burdens that he has as a father, but we also get that same thing, his burdens and responsibilities as a son, you know, with his parents Mm -hmm. back in Jamaica and sort of his grief over, you know, leaving them behind and everything that happens with them. So it's it's a really complex and and interesting story. Absolutely. Absolutely. So once you've listened to this story, listeners, come back next week for our conversation with Jonathan. Thanks to our friends at Macmillan Audio for sharing this story. And there's a link in the show notes where you can pick up the full audio book. And without further ado, here is Under the Aki Tree. We'll see you soon. Under the Aki Tree If you are the only son of Uptown Kingston parents, then you will have options. You can take daddy's dat son or mommy's new 68 Volkswagen and fly past street urchins who sell bag juice and aki at red lights down a Hope Road for pick up Rhea or Sanya or Sherry. If a Rhea you pick, you will carry shit to drive in. 
where you can stroke your ear while you watch Bond on the big screen. Rhea's family owned the bread shop on Barbican Road, where she worked most afternoons. And you like sniff your hair, since it always smell of cocoa bread or spice bun. It's sherry you like slow wine plenty nights down a new Kingston, with that epiphany you are dizzy. She tease you, you see? Push up hard pan your corners and grind your pelvis into yours before she laugh and push away. A sanya you like chat bad word with. So she you take a hell shy if you sit seaside and yam Escovitch snapper and chat bare fuckery till them telling her, You don't see the sun gone and it's time for move your body. If you're not careful, life goes so carefree till your daddy say, Time for get serious, boy, and stop all the play play. Time for go get job. Time for be a man. If him say so, tell him say you want go afar and for art school and learn fashion design. And don't him see how your sketchbook full up with concepts and him can't see your styly. But if he say that, him will answer, Fashion? A my son a sit down and so panty and frock? What kind of look a girl fantasy that? But daddy, man in Europe study fashion from time, you will tell him. Me no, him will say, batty man. You'll ask him, how you can be so small mind? You'll puff up your chest and pace the veranda and one fling him furniture, because him can't beat you like him did beat you when you were a picnic. Even he know him can't discipline you like before, so him say it calm. No bother with no fool for art school. If you can't be serious, you'll go work for me. And if you can't do that, you can left me house. And it don't feel then like you have too many options at all. So you start overseeing construction jobs. Though it's local you know about how man build house. Mostly is make sure man show up on time and don't leave early. Mostly is hunt worker down at bar after them disappear for lunch. When you run them down, the worker man malice you and call you rich man boy. Though your daddy business not so big that him wealthy. You don't like the job, but your father say, Since when man supposed to like job? But him pay you and let you use him work vehicle. And soon after you can afford apartment in Mandeville. And after that, you feel large. If you carry on like before with Rhea and Sanya and Sherry, it's Sanya who will come beat down upon your door and cuss you while Sherry sneak out back. You'll make promise and beg you a beg for she and in marriage one time. It's Sanya you love, like you love bread pudding and stew, which is more than you have loved before. You love that when she walk with your brass hand in yours, you can't tell where yours ends and hers begins. You love that where you see practical solution to the world problem, Sanya sees only the way things should be. Where you see a beggar boy in coronation market, Sanya sees infinite potential. Most of all, is she smile you fall for. Sanya teeth and dimples flawless, and you hope she'll pass this to your picnic, and that them will inherit your light eyes, which your father passed down to you. Sanya tall, you tall to Ras. She quick tongue and you pass six A levels. So your children will be bright. You only hope them get your teeth. If you marry she, you will have garden wedding and you will design your suit and pay tailor to stitch it nice. You will send out invitation and it will seem like the whole of Kingston will come celebrate on her and see how you and Sanya style in. All nine Panton sisters line up as Sanya bridesmaids, and it good you keep plenty friends from school who can balance your side. Mrs. Panton gives Sanya away, since she daddy dead and gone. Later, in Mandeville, if you breach she, you'll make a boy, and it seem your every want must come to pass. You will thank Sanya for the boy, though you know it man give Y chromosome. You know ignorant gully boy, but you thank her still. And though it's too early for know whether the baby will have she teeth, him have your eyes, so blue them nearly violet, 
So you're quietly grateful she not interfere with that. You will make the boy make a name, Christopher, after you. Even when most people know you as Tapa, you will make him first name Delano. You'll drive Delano up and down mountainside when I'm ball and can't sleep. And you don't speed like you did speed when it's only your life, drop potholes threaten you so. You drive the car slow, slow. Sanya will sing Irish hymns to Delano, the ones your grandmother sang when she was a picnic. And when neither she nor you can hold open your eyes, you will ask Jody, your helper, to push him stroll around the block until him drop asleep. If the night sound shift from croaking lizard to machine gun ratatata, you'll ask Jody not to walk with Delano at night. Your father will blame independence for the way things go, but you'll say, no man, it's the prime minister and all him socialist fuckery that caused the trouble. Don't you voted manly into office? Him will ask you, like is you alone had the one vote. Fool me once, you'll admit to him, but me never vote for him in 76. His rumor say manly body up with Castro and what him thought, the Yankee them was gone, let an next island in them backyard turn communist. Rumor say it CIA flood the garrisons with cocaine and make JLP rude boy war PNP bad man with automatic rifle. When just yesterday them could have murdered each other with only some stone and rust blade. If it just them sells the idiot boy slaughter, won't nobody care about them but war. Soon shots grow close though, and this uptown woman them killing crossfire. And police say them can't chase the boy back in them slums because ghetto youth now outgun policeman. Then the military must get involved. Your daddy call. And you know from how him voice shake, the war come show up at him doorstep. Gunman lick down them door and tie up your mummy and daddy and teeth off the money and jewelry and everything. Daddy them pistol whip and your mummy. God knows how them feel are up so. Even when she old her ass. But him tell you say it could have gone worse. How it can go worse? You ask him. But not a month passed before them rape your neighbor and kill her husband in front of she. The fuck of them is all one man in her eyes. No, two man. Siaga man and manly man. Though Uncle Sam man also I try swing jar elections. From then, you send off a US visa and ask your daddy brother for sponsor owner since he's been in the States for time. Things move fast. Your visa come true and you ask your mommy and daddy whether them think you should really go and them say, Boy, what wrong with you? You can't see the Wallaby Island turn war zone. And this what we gain independence for. Them say, better go and save yourselves. Jody asks, can you bring she to the States? But you can't afford to keep help her now. You tell she your mommy and daddy will take her, since them help her old and soon need help. You think about her New York, but is Miami a sickle? Because you visit your Uncle Michael in Brooklyn one November, and if the fowl can lick off your body with cold tongue, so you know I know what winter go do. Plus, the sister son you're closest with, Daphne, Take up with a man from Miami, and it's there she starts spending half the time. Is Miami you have your second son? At hospital, when them Andy the boy birth record for sign, under him birth year, 1980, in a section marked Race of Father, them type Negroid. You tell the nurse, me learn about Negro, but what is oid? But she don't bother with you. You name your second son Trelawney to remind yourself of home. It's long enough after you reach that you miss job bad bad. You miss walk down a road and pick Julie Mango off street side. When you try pick Miami street side Mango, lady come out your house with rifle and shoot your belly and backside with BB. In the back of your Cutler Ridge townhouse, you start try grow mango tree and aki tree with any seed you come by. But no amount of water or fertilizer will get them for sprout. In spite of him name, Trelawney grew up strange, foreign. 
You blame the nursery school teachers where you and Sanya leave him when you go work each morning, where you bring him from him turns six months. You blame yourself since you can't afford to let Sanya stay home like when Delano did barn. Still, when the boys start talk, you can't believe it. Is a Yankee voice come out? You read and talk to him as much as you can, but the boy no one pick up nothing you say. Not like him, brother. Him no say, mummy, for him first words. Him say, mom. Him have Sanya's dark eyes and none of she teeth are dimple. Him grow and soon it pain your ears to hear the boy say water, which him pronounce water. You can't spend all day talking to the boy. You work 12-hour shifts upon used car lot, sometimes selling car, most times selling nothing, until the day you take a man out for test drive and him stick him pistol in your gut and drive out all I ever glades until you say, get out and walk, and if you turn round, you're dead. You walk and walk and wait for die, and when you hear him pull off, you walk some more. You not better go back to work. Work for what? So them can shot you? If you wanted bullet in your back, you could have stayed in Kingston. It four weeks before you admit to Sanya what happened and that you leave the job. In that time, when the house empty, you start sketch landscape from home off memory. You sketch Duns River Falls and cockpit country and fern gully and it's shaky at first, but then your steady hand returned to you. You take a dozen sketches to the weekend flea market down the road and stand up all morning. But don't nobody want buy no colorless landscape. Them want garish flamingo watercolors like the lady upon the next table selling. But you can't afford paint or canvas. Or the time it takes to put the two together. And when Sanya start to ask where you find time for draw and how it is your car sales drop from little to zero, you have to tell she the truth. Sonia look upon your cross and say, You think me wouldn't rather stay home and doodle? You know she right, but she didn't have to put it so. You call your daddy and say you want expanding business in other states. But him say, The business barely holding on since manly piss off the IMF and make price of everything skyrocket. You say, But daddy, don't see our guy is prime minister now. But all him say is, Sure. Still, him send you small loan through money wire. You start basic. You go round and gather up man all a flea jar crime wave and see what all them can do. His roof you can repair. On a no plumbing system, you can fix AC. You use your father loan for put out advertisement and soon you start broker deals, send man up on job and collect small fee off it. It don't pick up straight away. And Sanya make more from she secretary job than you. She bright. So soon she then make office manager, even when no man want woman manage them. Still, you combine income less than what you alone made in Jamaica, and it seem you never can catch up back. But if you scrimp and scrounge and keep in luck favor, your family can just keep afloat. If years slip by, Delana will grow athletic, and this he the neighborhood boys will want quarterback when them play American football in the street, and him have a quarterback for both teams or else the boys cry, it no fear. Him start smile with him mummy mouth, and they can't see how the young girls are already crush after him. It seem him can do most anything. Him ask for guitar and lesson, and him pick it up fast, fast. The boys sing out in bedroom, where did you sleep last night, and... Purple rain and play along as he sing. Then him play past the duchy. And you know him never learned that from him teacher. Trelawney no one bother with sports or music. Him take book and you find him hiding in the closet with flashlight. When you ask him a question, him twist up in mouth and stare upon you blank with him big black eyes. If you say, answer me a boy, him look upon him brother. And if Delano repeat your question, Trelawney finally answer, like him needing brother for translate. Every day is our next thing. Him start drop on him bedroom walls, and no matter how you threaten him with belt, him can't stop. 
Him get A's in class, but can't figure out half the time shoe, so him sneakers must have Velcro. You tell Sonia something wrong with the boy, but she tell you, be patient. At him school open house, Jelani teacher say she want put him in thing called gifted. You say, what that, special ed? She say it's for advanced children so I'm not get bad. But you tell her, teach him for time shoe. Then we can talk. Then him start shit up in pants, even when him long past potty training. If you take him for doctor visit, the pediatrician will come out of the examination and say Trelawney have anxiety. What him have to be anxious about? Him not pay bills? Doctor said just give him time. Then Hurricane Gilbert come mash up Jamaica, and you can't think about nothing but how the people back home devastated. You can't get through to your parents, and the news say hundreds dead across the Caribbean. You call your friend them and son your sisters and everyone you can think of in Jamaica to see whether them can check on your mommy and daddy, but don't nobody phone work. The feeling you get is that everybody dead, and you never should have left them behind. You sit Delano and Trelawney down for breakfast the next morning and try to teach them culture to make sure it survive. The tropical market and colonial start carry canned ackee and green banana and salt card, so you cook the boys ackee and sawfish and try explain why it Jamaica national dish. You see this here? You say. The ackee grow in a pod and it must open pan its own or else the ackee pies in you. You point to the picture pan the can so them can see how it grow. And it reminds you that you never eat ackee out of no can before. You tell them, enslaved Jamaicans used to kill off slave driver and free themselves to the mountains. But you don't know if them legends true. Delano say, I remember Jody used to cook it for us. Trelawney say, it looks like scrambled eggs. You think me would stand up a two hour and cook the thing if it only tastes like eggs? It better than eggs, Delano say. But when Trelawney taste it, him spit it out and say, ew. How him can say, ew? Then your father call and say everything okay. Mostly it man who live in zinc house and homeless who live in the gullies that dead. Man and them children. Him say it just as well, since the people in the garrison so ignorant. Them don't bother get prenatal care. Them wonder why them baby come out malnourished or deformed. You say, Daddy, when you ever set foot in a tenement yard for no poor people business? And him kiss him teeth like him done with you. Him say, send what you can. So you go buy canned food and baby formula and get the boys for help gather up them old clothes for send. You can't help hoping it only bad mind people the storm kill off. The ones who wreck the island with them violence so Jack can return to how it was in our youth. But you know it never goes so. It always innocent randomness choose for kill. Work pick up, because now it seem you know everybody that gone and flee Jamaica. If not gunman, is Gilbert send them here. South Dade start fill up with yardies, and if you hang out where them hang out, you get job. Since them no one bother with the Spanish man who them can't understand or the white man who can't understand them, even when the all three speak a English. But Sonia no want to see you hang out. She wants to see you home. She start malice you and say, If I work, you go work. It's how you smell of overproof. It's how you come home two in the morning. She don't understand it through socialize you get job. Each time you come through the door, she there upon the phone with Daphne to tell out your business. And Daphne had the worst ear she could bend, since she man left her with picnic and never looked back. You want to say, tell her, me not have nothing to hide. But when Sonia tell it, the truth make you sound villainous. It seemed like one long fight you locked in. Then Jody call one day, and you say, Jody, if you go call long distance, me know someone they go dead. But you never guess she would have say his boat. You know his gunman finally kill off your mommy and daddy. And you never should have left them there. But Jody say a car accident killed them. You call Uncle Michael in New York and tell him say it's time to go home. 
you both fly back straight away to arrange funeral. And when you go collect them body, the policeman on duty have your daddy lay up on the gravel, baking in the rotted heat. Your uncle say to the kappa, How you can have him on the ground like dog? And him say, Please, please treat him with dignity. All from him breast to him belly a tremble with rage. The kappa say, Mag full up. There's no place else we can put the thing. Uncle Michael cry, Ting? Ting? And him start ball. And it's then you know the man turns soft in a New York. You tell the kappa, Hear me, a boy. Take out our next cops and bring my father inside until the undertaker can reach. You can cuss and talk about what him mumma fi do and say dup it they go haunt him for disrespect the dead, sir. But you know it the twenty dollars US that make the man do what you say. Him and him partner lift your father inside and dump out the next cops on the roadside with the others. Only a Kingston have more dead than Mog, you tell your uncle. You tell him, you forget how things work down here? You say, that na daddy, you know, daddy gone. But all him can do is cry. The day before funeral, you pick up Sonia and the boys from Norman Manley and carry them to your mummy and daddy house where you and Uncle Michael and Jody stay in. And the car rides somber like you never seen your picnic and wife. But in the afternoon, after sun shower pass, Delano and Trelawney go out in the backyard and pick up sticks and fight and scream and laugh like them little bodies can only hold so much grief. At funeral, crowds come from so far as Negril, which take longer for reach than from Miami and maybe even New York. Mrs. Pantana Ten, now walking with Keen, along with eight Asanya sisters, all but Daphne. Each say, Miss Sorry, Tapa. And each look enough like Sonya that it remind you she na look upon you with such kindness for time. Even Rhea come to the repast and squeeze your hand when she thinks Sonya na look. And you resist in the chair for see whether she still smell a spice bun because Sonya always a look. It's not till after funeral, after Sonya carry the boys back a Miami and Uncle Michael fly back a New York, and after weeks sorting through your parents' affairs, and after schoolboy show up on your daddy's door and hand you him grade sheet and say your daddy promised to pay him tuition if him do well, and you tell him your daddy dead, and the boy start cry like his he fate dealt the harshest lick. So you write out check to the academy, and after you slip under the white rum one mournful evening, and let Jody crawl upon your lap and start ride your cocky while on a ball about how your mummy and daddy gone, and after you return home, that song you say, things must change now. How you can say so? You ask her. When my parents did a three week, she said, me no one dead before you decide to come home at night. But you're not ready to hear that. You rather sleep on sofa. You rather things were the way they were in Mandeville. When you could take care of she and Delano, and she not worry so much about where a man's supposed to be. You wish for some way to go back. But if a Kingston you stayed, your parents still would have dead. If a Kingston you stayed, you could have dead long time. And you don't want to admit you start get used to American convenience. Too much for go back. But you know, son, you're right. Something must change. Then... Hurricane Andrew hit, and everything changed. House roof tear off, and you all must cram up in apartment in Fort Lauderdale. And for a month or so, it seems you and Sonia must come together and make up. But with everyone else blow down and fee must start hand out check, is more work than all the years you come here combined. You start recruitment from Miramar, which must have more yardman than our South Dade neighborhood. And you're on the road from dawn till deep night getting man working. Sanya stop complaining because she know people need the mouse fix. And she know it's like gold rush how the jobs come in. And even she get the next promotion at work. So in all the destruction, wanna find your silver lining. It nearly a year before your house fix because you're so busy and make money. You only can fix your house part time. One day you're back down in Miami and it late. 
and you decide to stop by the fence where all the yardies start reconvene, even when the house next door still have blue tarp for the roof. You sit upon your white run when you feel tugged from behind and you turn round and see Sherry still look the same like she travelled through time. She hug you up and say how she's sorry for learn about your mommy and daddy. She tell you how she move up here when she house get destroyed in Gilbert. You say, boy, seem like Storm knocked way back into each other's arms. But you not mean nothing by it. If she hear a song she says she favorite, she'll take your hand and pull you to the dance floor. She start grind she pelvis into yours, and you feel you're a young man again. But after three or four dance, your legs start ache, and you know it's time for put an end to the reunion. You know there's no returning to youth. You kiss Sherry cheek, and when you think she'll go and beg you for stay, she gives a small wave and start dance with her next man. <laughs> you drive back long, and when you reach, Sonia is up, waiting upon the couch, like she have a sixth sense for Sherry alone. What you gonna do? She start yell. What you gonna do? And this phone she having a she lap. It's just dance, she start say. When you sure it's a sus sus business get back to she. But she say, Jody call. She say, she call and the boy have your eyes. If Sonia throw the phone, you won't bother block it. The handset clip your forehead and leave gash that later scar because you never get stitched. You deserve the scar, and much worse, especially since the vexation marked Sonia with white streak through her hair that show up overnight. You sleep with you the whole time? Sonia wants to know. And you knew she would think that, if she ever found out, even when you never looked upon the girl Jody before the funeral. And you can see it in Sonia's eyes that suspicion start flooding all she memories. Now everything's sour, down to the root. And you beg her. You tell her it's Jody take advantage of you and your weakened state. And of course you never touched the girl when Sonia was pregnant with Delano, even in the time you and Sonia stopped having sex. Sonia smile when she say, I believe you. And you're going to hold her, and she box your face, even as blood leak from your fire in your eyes. I believe you will regret this for the rest of your life, she say. And you know she mean it with that demented smile. And you hate yourself for taking away part of she and replacing it with disfiguration. And more than that, you hate that she is right. If you go see the boy, it will be late summer. Joe the family called and called to tell you say you must come see a baby. But them never let you talk to Jody and so you want to ask if there's a baby for true or if this is a kidnap scheme. But you don't want to put that idea in them head. Still, you fly down to Kingston alone, since your shame won't let you bring witness. You hire a car and drive to Shantytown, buried in other mountains, halfway to Spanish town. Your cousin called the last time to say the baby's sick, and it's him give you directions, since where she live now don't have phone. And when you pull off highway and start drive down dirt path and see shacks made a lean to zinc, you can see don't nobody hear a phone. The shanty town walled in like this is a housing scheme. And you wonder whether it have name like Tel Aviv or Jungle or anything that signal man like you should not be here. Man who maybe should be here guarding the entrance him tell you, you better park and walk in. You made sure to leave home everything valuable. Because you hear stories that things so bad now in Ja that man hand get Chop off with cutlass because thief want him wristwatch and don't bother asking. The cash you brought over you hide in your sack. You approach the guard and him say, White man, you have business here. You almost laugh, but say, Is me you think is white man? And him say, You the whitest man me ever see. And him not say it with humor. You say you're there to see Jody. And the man wrap up his arm around you and show big teeth and say, Cousin! You know I'm not the same man you spoke with on the phone, because this man say a whole heap of words now, and you can't understand half of it, because you never hear a bush patwa like that. You wonder whether everyone in this shanty town is Jody's cousin. 
Him start walking you inside and telling you how beautiful the baby you make is. But all you can think about is how it good your mommy and daddy never live to see this. More than that, you think about how you breaks on your heart. And about how she make you choose between Delano and Trelawney if you take back to the house you finally rebuild. And how she says she will never set foot inside that house again. You told her you don't want to take either son from she. And she say, you think I gonna let you walk away from your responsibilities? Like that you planned the whole time. She say, you will take Delano because me don't trust you with Trelawney. And you can't deny you felt a small bit of relief. Joe, the cousin, walk you past a group of barefoot picnic kicks so the back of back and fought between them and woman who all a carry bucket of water upon them head. And when you peeking at the gaps in and lean up thin walls and see it's all one room and no plumbing or bathroom, you want to shout, but how people can live so? You know then that you must take Jody and the baby back with you because no boy of yours can grow up in such circumstance. If the baby truly yours. The man who same Jody cousin walk into a rusted hovel and there you find Jody sit down upon a blanket on the dirt and hold her baby in her arms. And when she see her, she look up and smile. But the smile demented, like how Sonia smiled the night she find out. And you never realize till now is a second woman you mutilate. You kneel down next to she, and when she hang you the baby, it's two things you see. Him have your eyes for true, so it must be yours, and that the baby dead from time. Jody cousin stand up at the entryway and menace you with him big teeth and say, you just miss him. You hand the baby to Jody and untuck the bundle of cash you hiding in your sack and leave it in Jody's lap. Then you go back to the car and drive straight to the airport. Certain them could not drag you back to this godforsaken island again. If you're a man who utterly failed this child, you can either lie down for join him in debt, or you can do more for those remaining. If the latter you choose, the first thing you can do is call your wife and beg she to take you back. You can leave message punch your answering machine and explain there's no more reason you must be apart and if it embarrass you feel no one up at state side has to know, at least no one has to talk about it. But if you do this, man will show up at your door early one morning and when you answer him, yes I'm tapper, he will smile and hand you a manila envelope and say, you've been served. It Trelawney you start worry after. Because even when Delano don't do too well in school, him is a boy who will make something out of nothing. The day him graduate, Delano start him own landscape business with money you loan him and have man your age working under him. But when you pick up Trelawney from Sonia Newhouse in West Miami, the boy can't hold nobody eye when him talk. And him barely talk, like him afraid of him own vice. Him dress up in baggy clothes and hoodie like him hiding, even when it's summer. You start bringing him to your house, because the first time you see how it pain him for watching brother and you living where him once had a proper family, it lasts him feel. But you wonder whether it also envy him brother. You take Trelawney out to eat instead every few weeks. And every few weeks him seem to change who him trying to be. First, his only tegareg rap music beat out his headphones. Then it Booga Yaga dance hall. When you ask how it only ghetto music him listen to, him say him want connect with him people. You say, boy, them butta singer not your people. You think your grandfather would let them type a man pan him veranda? But Trenani say him don't remember him grandfather too well. If you buy two acres of land in Palmetto Bay and start make plans to build new house, you'll try involving the boy. You sketch the design of what the house could be, and it good to feel your hand drying over paper after so long. You try to show Trelawney your mock-up and where him room might be when he visit, but him nobody pay much attention and stare out restaurant window instead. You know him resent you for the divorce, and you wonder what ideas him mother put in him head. You almost tell him it's Sanya spit up your family and make you choose Delano over him, 
but you don't want to have to explain the reasons why. Oh no, when the cancer start take Daphne, Sonia don't want to hear nothing but how you keep saying your prayers. When the construction soon start, you ask Trelawney if he want help. The way Delano helped rebuild the Cutler Ridge townhouse, but him say, how much does that pay? You tell him you're trying to teach him something, but him say, I already learned Lincoln freed the slaves. Him add, maybe Delano should have paid attention in school. The boy think him smart, you see. Back home, you ask Delano why him brother must be so cantankerous. Delano say, we all have to be what we have to be. You ask, who told you that? And when him shrug, you say, I'm not going to soon learn. If you want to make it in this world, you best be better than that. One day, while you and Trelawney out at lunch, Delano paid you and say him have a surprise, and you're to meet him at the construction site in Palmetto Bay. When the tour you reach, you see his full-grown aki tree Delano have him crew transplanting at the backyard. Him say man in coconut grove paid him to chop it down, but him save it and bring it here instead. The man to get tractor and trailer and permit to transport the thing, and if you have any luck at all, the tree should survive and start bear fruit in a year or so. Yeah, I start water, and you see how it not everything lasts after all. You see your legacy can grow, even in a foreign soil. You thank Delano with handshake, and at the corner of your eye, you see Trelawney look bewildered, like him don't get the point, like him don't understand why him brother would bother. When he finally take himself away to college, you hope Trelawney will meet people like him, people who find them worth in books, sensitive people. Him swear same hard, since him put off college for work warehouse job, where him drive forklift and perform manual labor. But when you suggest that him throw out him wardrobe and buy proper clothes when he arrives in the north, suggest that him is old enough to start wear clown clothes, Jelani look like him won't cry. How him can upset so easy? Miami too rough. Too much like home for the boy. You don't see how him can survive here, where man always try to test you and always try to get over. So you're glad when him leave for some place he can find him true self. But when him graduate, Trelawney move back. You ask him, what you gonna do now? But him only shrug and stick him hands in him pockets and say him go figure it out. But you not see him figure nothing. Only him hide in the room you give him in your new house. Only him sit down upon him computer and do God knows. Seem like college only make the boy less fit for work. This is how it's done now, Trelawney tell you. You apply online. No one wants me showing up in their lobby reeking of desperation, him say. No one will hire me if they suspect I need a job. Oh, what kind of backward thinking that? You tell Trelawney to check his brother for work, but him say, you think I got my BA so I could start mowing lawns? It just as well, because Delana Tree Service struggling to this great recession. And now Delana have wife and picnic of him own, so him can't carry his brother. And your business grind to a halt, so it better you just retire from now. Anyway, you can't tell Trelawney nothing. Him think them teach him everything up a night, and the whole of Miami ignorant. When him reach back, you tell him that with all the job loss, him better stay away from certain neighborhood. And the boy say, there's no such thing as a bad neighborhood. And it's systemic racism and white collar greed cause the crime. Like him knowing the sauce can stop the bullet. Like him will sit down with rubber and explain to him about subprime mortgage and school to prison pipeline. Even if things tight, you'll still decide for old retirement party. Since you've reached the age where all your friends start die off and you want to show people the house while there's still people left for show. Plus, you start feel you don't have too many ifs ahead, only bleak certainties. Your house finally finished the way you want, with in-ground pool and bar and more fruit trees flanking your aki tree, lying in the back garden. It's the house you always dream about design, and a part of your sad son you will never see it, since you still hate your guts after all these years. She called before Trelawney graduate, 
and told you how she was moving back to Kingston. You said, Sanya, you crazy? But she said, just look after the boy, nah. And the boy Trelawney back not a two week and him say him go on and write him friend up from Ja. Girl him met when him spend him summer break in Kingston. You think, careful she not after you for green card. But it not nice for say those things. Instead you ask the boy where him did apply today. And him admit him no apply for job today at all. Instead him say him work on application for grant for go live in Jamaica for a year and do research. You must want to study how to get your brains blown out, you tell him. Him say next him go apply for Jamaican passport. You say, boy, is that death wish you and your mother share? But the boy just turned back to him laptop like you're not there speaking. The night at the party, you make Trelawney help set up a tiki touch poolside and get the yard trim up nice and you get caterer to set up buffet in the backyard and have them serve a jerk pork and about three sets of curry. You put out the old table so man don't brock up your good dining table with them dominoes. You drape lights from the roof of the pool deck and turn pool light on so everything glow. Even when you know none of your friends want to take off them shirt and frock for getting on a pool at night. The ackee tree bearing fruit now and some of the ackee pods start open so you buy salt card to pair with it for breakfast the next morning. The invite list long and even Uncle Michael fly down from New York and you can't believe how I'm getting maga and him tell you him can't believe how you get old. Delano come with Shelly Ann and them two boys and when Shelly asks whether you want to hold the baby, you say no because both them boys get your father eyes and you think about Joe the baby and the thoughts sick you. Delano get him banned for set up on the patio and play roots music and then bring all the young people and all your old crowd from the fence come true. Even Cherie show up eventually, but she don't want nothing to do with you besides be friends. Trelawney girlfriend Zoe show up too, and you can't believe how the girl gorgeous. Like girl you would have date in your day. And Trelawney stand up straight and tall like you never see him stand up, and him finally wearing clothes that fit properly. Still, you don't want to admit you wonder what she can see in him. But maybe she sees something you can't. The party go on late, and man start in pon the white rum, and maybe you take down too much because Trelawney start look pon your sideways, but the boy always look pon your sideways, so you don't know. In the kitchen, you start talk politics back home with Zoe, but Trelawney keep interrupt. Trelawney say Manly had the right idea, wanting to spread wealth to the poor people. You tell him, boy, is Manly mash up the country in a Equal parts he and your CIA. Then we should have stayed to defend it, the boy tell you, like he was there. If we stayed, you wouldn't be alive. Me can promise you that. Then how come Zoe is here, he asks you, and him laugh. Her family stayed. They turned out fine, more than fine. Zoe nod, but you can tell she uncomfortable. You don't want to say it. But ask her, is how much bar your windows have? How much guard dog in your yard? You can walk down your street and feel safe? She say, me have car. Me no need walk nowhere. And she laughed too. You tell Trelawney, Pickney who grew up in a hellhole can't know the difference. Zoe starts say, it have its problems, but Trelawney cuts you off and say, I was just there and it's better than this. Better than what? You want know. This second class citizenship, him say. And you don't know what rubbish the boy talking now. What them teach at school? He ask. Only self pity? Him say, you and mom never should have left. And that really make you vex. So you say, look here. Don't tell me about my business when you never lived through it. Talk about Yankee business. Now, but I talk to me about Jamaica. Don't care what them showed you upon vacation. You spend three weeks in a job and you think that make you more than tourist? Him shrug and look around with him eyes low, like him embarrassed. But you go on. Boy soft like you never could have make it. Boy who can't take getting man's dirty. Your brother maybe, but you wouldn't last a day. 
soft boy like you would have dead long time. So just be grateful we left. Even if our leaving what made you turn out so. And you know you must stop talk. But you add the word you've been thinking ever since him reached back of Miami and long before him left. Defective. And you know from everyone's face you take it too far. Jelani won't even look at you. But him head nod slow, slow. Uncle Michael looking at you disappointed, and Shelley start carry she picked me away. You think he might need air. So you say, Jelani, do me a favor, go take down some ackee for me now, so I can make it for breakfast. And him nod still, and you can't be sure he even here. But then him stand up and walk out back. Make sure the open ackee only. You yell after him, because you can't tell if the boy remember anything you taught him from him as a child. You try smile with Zoe, but she looked to the front door like she wondering how she can reach home. You start get up, and Uncle Michael say, You don't have to give the boy such a hard time, you know. But him them already turned soft, so you know bother with the old man. You go out to the patio and wonder why everyone is turned around in them chairs, peering off in the dark. But then you hear it, loud grunt and dull thud, and you see Trelawney's silhouette under the ackee tree, how with axe in him hands, and him talking to himself now, and him swinging the axe, and you start after him. But Delano grab your wrist and shake him head and hold you back. And it's then you know it's serious. And you think how, Sonia right. You regret everything. And you wonder if it's you must be defective, since you ruin everyone. And you know the boy ruin, because the same words him repeating like warped 45. I'll chop down your tree. I'll chop down your tree. I'll chop down your fucking tree.